During 2021, Australian professional cyclist for Ineos Grenadiers, Richie Port, climbed 660,000 meters on his bike. It's a number that most people can't wrap their head around. It's a number that you can't really fathom. Today, I'm riding with a cyclist who is taking that number and absolutely blowing it out of the water. Jack Ultra Cyclist is a professional ultra distance cyclist living in Girona who is currently on his way to climbing 1 million meters in 2022. To give you an idea of how high 1 million meters is, it's 20,000 meters every single week, two and a half thousand meters is every single day. It's 113 times from sea level to the top of Mount Everest, or in layman's terms, that's 188,818 fully grown adult male giraffes laid end to end. It's a big number. Bon dia, welcome to this week's episode of Tristan Tate Video. I'm out here riding with Australian cyclist Jack Thompson, AKA Jack Ultra Cyclist. Today, Jack's doing a mid-sized ride. He's on his way out to Rocacorba to do three ascents of the famous Rocacorba climb here in Girona for 3,000 meters of vertical. This is just one small stepping stone in a much larger picture of what Jack is doing this year. Jack's done some pretty massive distances over the last few years. He's set a couple of world records, but this year Jack's doing something even bigger. It's a really, really big one. Let's just start out with where the idea for the million meters came from. So I was in Portugal last year. I had a bit of an idea that I wanted to try and Everest in every single one of the 26 municipalities of Portugal. And for whatever reason that fell through, I sort of started playing with numbers. And I thought, you know what, maybe I could Everest every week for a year. And I worked out that'd give me around 470, 500,000 meters of vert. And me being me, I decided, you know, I need to try and up that a little bit. So I set that figure to a million meters and rather than trying to raise awareness for mental health which i've done in the past i thought why don't i try and raise a million euros for mental health so a euro for every meter climbed one of the things jack's doing this year in order to get to the million meters is actually doing one everesting every single week you guys might have seen me everesting on the backside of hell's angels in that episode i released a couple of months ago that was a big day for me jack's doing one of those every single week and has so far done 19 of them everesting is 8848 meters in one ride on one climb tell me a bit about the physical side of doing an Everesting every single week. Yeah, Everesting is fucking harder. Huh? Like, I don't think they ever get easier. I don't think the uh, the body ever really adjusts to them. It becomes a bit of a mental game and just trying to work through a long day on the bike. So I think the quickest one we've done is nine hours and something, and the longest one's probably 14 hours. I think just the sheer time on the bike is for a lot of people hard to get their head around. I've come up with a few little tactics to get around it but at the end of the day it's a big physical challenge and it leaves you bloody tired the next day and then to try and have to back that up day after day and log the meters it's actually really fucking difficult. So you're doing an Everest and you've kind of been doing them on like Fridays every week and in the lead up to that you're also doing like you do two and a half thousand meters Monday. You got a pretty strict schedule down for your meters yeah? Yeah so I try and keep it the same every single week just because I'm a bit of a a sucker for routine. So Monday is 2,500 as Tristan said, Tuesday 3,000, Wednesday 2,500, Thursday 1,500, an easy day before an Everest, Friday the old Everest, 8848, Saturday 1,000 meters and Sunday cheeky little sleep in day off the bike. Bloody hell. <laughs> So we just made it onto the base of the Rocacorba climb. For anyone that's been to Girona, you'll know how bloody hard Rocacorba is. This is a 10K climb at about 8%, but as a really, really steep middle section. So we're just gonna cruise up here. So Jack's doing 52 Everestings this year. The first one you did at the start of January. Oh God, yeah. start of Jan, first week, freezing cold. For those that know Girona, the climb the Mare or St. St. Marty's to come, probably the coldest climb in Girona. I think it was minus five when we were up up. And going up, you obviously sweat, and coming down, you freeze. It was really brutal, I wasn't really ready for it, and a bit of a shock to the system. There's been some doozies throughout the year so far, all for different reasons. 
Some are hard physically because the grade's super steep. Some are more mental, just given what's going on in your life with personal stresses and whatnot. I'd say last week was the hardest one yet. Just super steep, I didn't have enough gears. I had another event on Sunday, my rest day. I think mentally knowing I wasn't gonna get a day off, cracked me a little bit. You've obviously done all of your Everestings in the Girona region because you kind of haven't left Catalonia yet. So you've been sort of discovering climbs within Catalonia. To begin with, I maybe had six climbs earmarked that I could Everest. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to have to disappear out of Girona and find somewhere else. But managed to find 19. So Monsain, I've done three on Monsain in the National Park. I've gone recently to a lot because it's a little bit cooler. Further north near the French border, Cadiz Way. Iconic ones of Girona, Rajacorba. Matadeu, uh, Els Angels. I think I'm close to doing them all. I, I'm a little bit nervous about getting back from the States because I don't know where I'm going to go. You were saying at the start of the year how you quite like the idea. You had said to me that you quite like the idea of doing longer climbs, but you've also done a bunch of the shorter, steeper ones, like a yeah. one kilometer climb or a 2K climb. Have you come to a decision as to what you prefer for an Everesting? I'm not a little guy, like I'm 82 odd kilos, so I thought the long ones would suit me better. But I've, I've enjoyed the shorter, steeper ones. I think because you obviously go up and it's hard, but you recover far more frequently. And especially in winter, if you go up a long climb, you heat up and then you descend down a long climb, you cool down and then so your body temperature fluctuations are massive. Yeah. The small climbs are really quite easy to keep it constant. Yeah. And it's quite nice just ticking them off more regularly. So bloody hell, that's a lot of uh, climbing that you've done in Everest. And then in a couple of days time, you're heading off to the US and you're linking up with a few of your sponsors to do some rides yeah. over there. So I specialized a base just out of Santa Cruz because of COVID. I haven't actually met a lot of the guys and girls within the brand. So going over there to link up with Specialized and do a Everest thing with the team there. Then to the mountains of the Los Sierras for the Reval Everest thing. And finally, a bit of fun in San Fran with Veloccio. Are you looking forward to getting out of Girona or are you finding obviously the routine's really, really nice for you? I like Girona. I like I, I have my mates here. I have everything around me. It's easy. I know where I'm going, but you know, it'll be nice to break it up and climb somewhere different. And you know, I'm looking forward to getting back here already. It's a good place to be based. <laughs> So the US should be good fun. Still obviously loving Girona like me. If you guys watched the episode with us back in December where we went out and did this 4,000 meter day, we spoke a bit about why Jack rides his bike for his own mental health and also to bring awareness to mental health in general. That's uh, been something that's pretty close to Jack's heart for the last few years. You were saying earlier to me about how the physical side of this challenge is, is serious, but then also the importance of not only raising mental health awareness, but also raising money this year. And that's a yeah. new challenge for you. Yeah, so growing up, I suffered from depression quite badly and found myself in rehab for a little while with a, a drug addiction. And for me, I was lucky to come out the other side. I know there's people that don't come out the other side. So to be given this second chance and you know, to be fortunate enough to ride my bike for a living now, I figure, you know, let's do some good with it. And you know, for me, it's my meditation, it's my therapy. And if I can combine that with you know, helping other people just by riding my bike, then you know, I have the most satisfying job in the world. For me, I'm pretty comfortable with the physical side of climbing the elevation, but raising money is like a whole new game for me. I feel funny asking for money. I feel funny trying to push people for money. It's not my style, but at the end of the day, like I am trying to raise a million euros for four mental health charities. And at some point I need to ask for money or try and work out how I'm going to raise it. So for me, it's a bit of a stress, but like everything, like I think there's a way of dealing with it and I think we can make it happen. Here's hoping people get behind it and we can raise that money for a good cause. So you're raising money for four different charities yep. throughout the course of this year. So the four charities are pretty close to my heart for different reasons. The first charity, and in no particular order, is a charity based in the US called Outride. Outride essentially raise money and provide funding to children to get them on bikes and to highlight the benefits of bikes on their mental health. Second charity, Kids Helpline, an Australian charity, which is basically a free phone service where kids can pick up the phone and talk to a counsellor in times of need. A third charity, Strong Minds, which is an African charity, basically structured to support women and adolescents in Central Africa with a psychosocial service. And finally, AMNA, supporting refugees out of Ukraine given the 
the crisis that's sort of ongoing in Ukraine and Russia, providing those people that have had to flee the country with a, with a counselling service to help them get through the next difficult chapter of their lives. If you guys want to donate, there is a link to Jack's website down in the description where you can check out a bit more about the Space Odyssey 1 million meters and uh, donate to any of the four charities if, if you'd like to. As you guys can see as well, it might all look like fun and games from Instagram and Strava and whatnot. It's actually fucking hard work and like some days I wake up and I don't really want to get on the bike. But I got a goal and I want to, I want to make a difference and I want to achieve that goal and so I'm out here coming out Rucker Corba three times and sure I'm lucky to be able to do that but there is an end goal that's not just because I enjoy riding my bike it's because I want to make that difference. Jack did on Sunday what's called a killy. It's actually the first of its kind in the world. He did the height of Mount Kilimanjaro, which is 5,895 meters. The one. And where did the Kili concept come from? So we thought with having the charity Strong Minds in Africa, we could try and do an event based around Africa. Given it's a climbing challenge this year, Mount Kilimanjaro is the highest mountain in Africa. We thought, let's call it a Kili and try and climb that height and try and attract donations for others who want to climb it to go towards the Strong Minds charity. So that was this past Sunday, that was two days ago. Yep. Last week you'd already done, up to your Everest, you had done pretty much 18,000 meters and then you chucked on another 6,000 meters on Sunday. That's your biggest week to date, that's 25,000 meters or so? Yeah, 25,000 odd meters in a week. I'm a bit ahead of schedule. I got a bit of travel this week, so I've, I'm trying to sort of lock in a few extra meters so that I can afford to have a day off Thanks. when I fly to the States. This is a good idea for you guys. If anyone's not up to the challenge of doing a full Everesting, consider a Killy. Jump on Jack Strava and have a look at the Killy and uh, give it a crack yourself. It's a couple of thousand meters less than the Everesting, so it's a pretty manageable number, but still a massive, massive day. So we're at the top of Rock of Corba now. Decent climb that one, brutal on a hot day. It's been super, super warm this week. So it's the first proper hot week out here in Girona, reaching 30 degrees every day. Nice to get some warmth though after a long winter. Just tell us before I head off. So you're off to the US in a couple of days. And then what's the plan for the second half of the year? You come back from the US and what's yeah, in store? Yeah, back from the US and then we're gonna try and do something at the Tour de France again this year. Bit of time in France and then some time in Africa, September time. You're heading to Africa? Gonna go to Africa, do something in Africa. Sick, what about? There? I think Central Africa, Uganda, where the Strong Minds charity is. So trying to do something with the women and children there. And then trying to get down to Asia, Bhutan and Japan for a little bit or wrapping things up in Oz in December. Big second half of the year coming up for Jack. If you want to see what Jack's up to, definitely give him a follow on Instagram. I'll whack his Instagram just down below here where you can check it out. It's also in the description if you want to click on that. I am heading off to Andorra today, so I'm going to head down and roll back to Girona. Jack is uh, going to do another two ascents of Rock of Corba. <laughs> Feeling that. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you enjoyed learning about the man climbing a million meters this year, a space odyssey. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you guys all in the next episode of Tristan Take Video or Jack Ultra Cyclist very, very soon. All right, there you go.